Alright, we're continuing on with our cinematic sequence, and technically, at this point, our matinee cinematic work is done. We've already animated our robot, we've animated our camera, we've worked on our lighting, our materials, all of this has been animated. Everything else we're going to do is going to be some kismet work in the background to make this cinematic sequence fit more cleanly with our gameplay. So, for starters, what we're going to do is take our little spawned robot and run him into the room where the player is now sitting. So you're going to watch the movie, the robot's going to do his throat slit, of course then we hide out the skeletal mesh robot and swap it out for an AI bot, but we need to get the bot into the room. Now if you have ever done any work with bots and AI inside of Unreal in the past, your very first thought may be to drop down some path nodes and allow those to guide the robot to the player's position. Here's the problem with that. This level has a couple of things. One, it has a rocket launcher located up here, and it has a vehicle located over here. And giving our robot that much freedom, as, as soon as we set up some paths, the first thing he's going to try to do is just run for this vehicle, which is a little anticlimactic, and it means if we come around the corner, he's going to try to pelt us with scorpion fire. If we disable this, and disabling the vehicle is very easy, just simply double-click it, and if we come under UT Vehicle Factory, you'll see the disabled checkbox. Just make sure that that's on, and then nobody can use the vehicle, which is fine in confines this small. Now, if we were to set up some path nodes to guide the robot in this far, as soon as he detected that he could find a way to get up here, he would ignore the player entirely, and he would just run up here and get the rocket launcher. I don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do instead is use another system to force the robot to run into the room. So let's take a look at how we can do this. I'm going to jump into Kismet. And here's our actor factory. Now, this is what is responsible for spawning our bot into the world. And we can take the bot as soon as it's spawned and store it into a variable. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to right-click on the spawned output and choose Create New Object Variable. And there we go. Now, it the time of actually writing this out is at the time that we're building this script, this variable is empty. During game time, whatever object is spawned, in our case a UT bot, will get placed into this variable. Now we can pass that information onto another node. So right next to our actor factory sequence object, I'm going to right click, choose new action, actor, excuse me, I'm going to go down to AI, excuse me, and we'll grab move to actor. Now, I'm going to take the finished output of our actor factory and plug that into the move to actor. Now, move to actor is looking for a little bit of information. First off, it wants a target. That's basically asking what object is going to be moving, and that's going to be whatever bot was spawned. So we'll just plug that right into our variable. Next, next it's looking for a destination. So to, cr to create the destination, we can create any actor in our scene. Anything that's placeable can be used. So what I'm going to do is use a placeholder actor of a note. So let's open up the content browser, jump over to actor classes, and right at the topmost level, you'll see a note actor. Click on that. Let's right click, say here on the floor, and choose add note here. Now you can pick this guy up out of the floor, but leave him pretty low. If you get him up too high, the robot won't be able to see him as a navigation point anymore. So I'm just kind of sliding him down until the little backboard of the notepad is just kind of sticking down through the floor. So this is note zero. Let's go back into Kismet. I'm going to right click on our destination input and choose new object var using note zero. Let's close and give this a quick test. Just see what we get. Unit in position. Now, if everything works, we should be able to wait just a second, and as soon as we round the corner, that bot should be right up here by the door. And he is. So we got him really close to the entrance. However, let me point something out to you. So you might be thinking, well, that's great. Why don't we just take this, and we'll put it exactly where we want our bot to go. Right up in here, I suppose. Try this out. Unit in position. And we'll just wait for the robot to round the corner. And he's not here yet. 
and he's still not here. In fact, he's still sitting way back there in the back. This is a very rudimentary form of navigation. This is, I mean, really just grabbing your robot by the brain and saying, hey, run to this guy. So what we got to do is kind of walk him in. So we're going to slide this back. Get it right about here. Now I'm going to duplicate this object off. So let's hold down Alt and we'll slide this over. Now doing this will cause me to have to adjust some of my uh, node actors over inside of Kismet. Because now if we jump back over to Kismet, we're now running to note one instead of note zero. Basically when you duplicate an object using the Alt key, what's happening is that the duplicate is left at the location of the original object and you're actually dragging the original object with you. Now they're nice enough to set it up so that Kismet will update, but that's not exactly what we wanted in this case. I'm going to grab my move to actor and just hit control C, control V, and we'll duplicate that. Notice it's already connected to a couple of things. It's already connected to note one, which is fine. In fact, I can unhook that guy over here. Actually, let's just unhook everything. We'll keep everything really straightforward for now. So what we're going to do is say we move to the first actor. When we're finished with that, move to the second actor. Now let's make sure we've got exactly who's who set up. So if we select this first actor, this is note one. So the first guy we want to run to is note one. The next guy we want to run to is note zero. So we'll select that, jump back over to Kismet, right click on destination, and there we go. So now we're running to note one, then to note zero. Now we can just take the target, plug it in right over here, and we should be good to go. Now let's try this out. And we should see him run into the room, and here he is. But here's the great thing. He doesn't see us yet. Shh, be quiet. We can sneak past him. He'll completely ignore us. Or we can just walk right up behind him and... Blam! Okay. So he's kind of, kind of dumb in that unless he sees you, he's not going to attack. Well, we can fix that too. If we jump into Kismet, see, like, the hard part's done. We've got him into the room. Let's go into Kismet, though, and take a look. Our move to actor sequence objects have a look at input. So we can actually tell the robot to look at something, or in this case, somebody. Let's grab our player zero uh, variable that we actually had connected up here to our cinematic mode. I'm going to hit control C, fly over here to the move to actor, and hit control V, and we'll connect that in like so. Now let's try this out. So right click, play from here. Now when he rounds the corner, as he runs to that second point, he should be looking right at us, which means he's going to immediately open fire. And there he goes. Immediately trying to kill us. Now, the cool thing about doing it this way is that we don't run any risk of him ever thinking that he can run up here and grab the rocket launcher. We're going to leave that to be our little secret, which is going to be really important here in an upcoming video. For now, though, go ahead and save your work, and we'll continue on after this. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is.